What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and today we will discuss from the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Oh my god, we just finished it. What's there to discuss? No, we have not finished the first chapter. We have finished reading the verses from the first chapter but that doesn't mean we have digested it. <laughs> okay, so now we will see what lessons we need to take from the first chapter. Oh my god, there are so many chapters. <laughs> but no problem. We will finish every verse, every purport, every shloka, every syllable. And we will also derive the meanings from the purports. Alright. If you are new to the channel and even now you have not subscribed to it, then I don't know what to say. <laughs> Probably you should consider subscribing so that you get updates on Bhagavad Gita every alternate day. I don't think there's any channel in YouTube who will give that to you. Okay, and if you're interested in a personal consultation, then please contact me through the Vedic Renaissance website, which I have put the link down below. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end. And if you have not watched the earlier videos on the Bhagavad Gita, then please go back and watch. Otherwise, you may be clueless about what I'm talking here. Okay, so basically we saw in the first chapter how Arjuna is not willing to fight. What are the reasons, the different justifications Arjuna is giving to not fight the war in the battlefield? Yes, he is saying, oh, these people are my relatives. What will I obtain if I kill them? No? Just for the sake of sitting in the throne. Why should I kill them? Yes, because if, at, if these people don't remain at the end of the day what will i do uh, with the kingdom that's what arjuna's concern is right and that is quite of a genuine concern but the question is is that uh, valid <laughs> concerns can be genuine but that doesn't mean it's valid always which means even though the concern is genuine there may be higher reasons than your perceived reasons to still do them which means for Arjuna, his arguments, which he has given in the first chapter, about which we discussed, are very valid. All right, But does it mean they are true? <laughs> or does it mean that should at all he think of these arguments? All right, So that is what we will discuss today. And before beginning, as I say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you understand is Arjuna's arguments valid or not. And before I begin, I must offer prayers to my gurus who have bestowed the divine knowledge unto me. Om Gyan Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Nilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. Alright. So now Arjuna is completely helpless now. He has been, he has undergone a paralysis by analysis. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing too much analysis okay this will happen that will happen and because of that he's not able to do anything this is like telling see Arjuna before speaking about Arjuna we have to understand who Arjuna is okay he is the unparalleled warrior in the battlefield of Kurukshetra there is nobody like him of course he has his gurus like Dronacharya and his grandfather Bhishma they are stalwarts. There's no doubt about it. But Arjuna is Arjuna ultimately. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that Arjuna is superior to Drona or to Bhishma. But he was young. And because of that, he was extremely powerful. Drona and Bhishma were powerful in their own way. They had more experience in fighting because they were much, much elder to him. But Arjuna had his own strengths. He was very young. Young means not a teenager <laughs> but he was relatively much more young than Drona and Bhishma so by that he had more energy more power to fight all right and Arjuna also had many divine weapons from Lord Shiva and all the four principal Lokpalas from the four principal directions Indra Varuna Yama Kuber they had all bestowed their divine weapons to Arjuna so now the point here is to understand a person of the caliber of Arjuna also can undergo paralysis just by getting into the nitty gritty of certain rules and regulations. 
or certain conceptions of what is right, what is wrong, what should be done, what should not be done. And he's not an ordinary person here. He's the best actually. He's the most handsome prince available in the entire world at that time. He's the most humble. See, generally you will see people who are handsome or good looking. They may not be humble necessarily. They will always have this ego. Yes, yes, I look so great. Yes. Not necessarily all the time. And then he's most knowledgeable because he is the son of Indra actually. Yudhishthir is the son of Yamaraj. Bhima is the son of Vayu. And Arjuna is the son of Indra. And Nakul Saideva were sons of Ashwini Kumaras, the twins, the healers. And as known in the heavenly worlds, the senior most, the most powerful, the most valorous, the most chivalrous, the most opulent, the most prosperous among all demigods, the Devatas, is Indra. So similarly, among all the sons of Pandu, which were begotten through the demigods by Kunti, Arjuna was the best. He was excelling in all the different military skills. People say he was a great archer. That is true. But he was equal to Bhima in fighting of the mace, in mace fight, which is known as Gada, Gada Yudh. He was equal to Yudhishthir in spear fighting, which is called Bhala. And he was equally powerful, like Nakul and Saide when they used to fight with swords. And as his own power of being an archer, he was invincible. There was no body who could defeat Arjuna. Arjuna has never ever faced defeat in his life. I mean, at least till that time. Nobody ever ever in the history has ever defeated Arjuna. All right. People in, in India think that Karana was a superior uh, person to him in battle, but that's not true. Mahabharata doesn't say so. We will go on Karna later. But why I am bringing Karna's topic here? Because when I say this, somebody may object to me. Oh, no, no, but Karna had defeated him. Karna never defeated Arjuna. If somebody has read the original texts of the Mahabharata, they will know. Okay, we will go to Karna later. Today's video is not about Arjuna and Karna. Okay, that is the topic of some other day. But he is the most handsome. He is the most knowledgeable. He is the most masculine person out there. He is the most chivalrous he is the most virtuous my god he is the best of the best that is why one of the names of arjuna is falguni falguni means one who is perfect perfect means one who is good in everything he is good in looks good in behavior good in knowledge good in skills good in fighting he's like all-rounder he's like the best of the best but the predicament of this world is that a personality of the caliber of Arjuna can also undergo paralysis. Alright. <laughs> Why is he undergoing this paralysis? Because he has certain conceptions of what is right and wrong. So now Arjuna has given different arguments. He's saying we should not kill the family tradition. By that the women of the family will be, be polluted. And by that the unwanted progeny will be there. And then this unwanted progeny will not give... Uh, oblations to the ancestors and by that what will happen the ancestors will not be happy and then that whole cycle Arjuna explains as we have discussed in the earlier verses okay so now this is his conception of what is right and wrong should I repeat this is his conception of what is right and wrong which is not bad which is true actually <laughs> but just because that is true it doesn't mean that that is correct for that point of time which means, in a sense, that certainly these things which Arjuna is speaking is true. But at that point of time, he should have kept all those things aside and he should have concentrated on fighting. Because that at that moment, that was the need of the hour. Because the Kurus were pillars of irreligion, Adharma. Yes, they had done so many cruel, so many unjust, so many horrendous activities. I can go on taking name of those activities. Uh, headed by Duryodhana, Dushasana, Karna, Shakuni, the plots which they had arranged in Varnavara to kill the Pandavas. In the gambling match, they had cheated the Pandavas of their kingdom and they also insulted Draupadi, who was the 
wife of all the five pandavas combined and then so many things they did wrong when uh, the pandavas were in the forest yes then this duryodhana cunningly sent durvasmuni there and by krishna's blessing somehow that disaster uh, was evaded and then so many other places duryodhana had tried to insult them kill them and one uh, instance comes in the mahabharat that the pandavas are in the forest and then duryodhana along with karana and dushasan wants to go and attack the pandavas when they are alone five of them and he goes with his whole army but then what happens suddenly vyasdev appears in front of them and vyasdev says you rascal go back from where you have come <laughs> if you try to attack the pandavas now when they are in the forest they are defenseless they are helpless i will curse you and the moment i curse you you along with all your brothers and your entire family will be extinguished you will be wiped out and then duryodhana he was alarmed by the, this anger of vyasdev and he said oh my dear great sage please don't do this <laughs> we will go back don't worry we will not attack the pandavas <laughs> so we see that duryodhana had tried so many evil schemes and imagine what would happen if this person would be sitting in the throne it would be perhaps the worst disaster till date yes i stay here in germany and everybody knows from germany who is famous right so this famous personality from germany he is known to have killed so many hundreds thousands lakhs millions of jews i don't know what's the number but imagine what would happen if duryodhana would sit in the throne he would have surpassed hitler also <laughs> he would have hitler would have uh, felt ashamed <laughs> hitler would have uh, felt maybe how much ever i kill the jews but i can never exceed what duryodhana did yes so we have to understand that arjuna has certain conceptions of what is right wrong but at that time those considerations had to be put aside because there was a higher cause the need of the hour was to punish the evil people there dushasana duryodhana karana shakuni all these people they had to be killed they had to be punished because they were terribly sinful and if they would sit in the throne which arjuna is telling here in the gita that oh better is i go to the forest now let them sit here this would have not yielded any substantial good for the society okay it would still land up in total chaos and total destruction there would be mayhem in the society that is what lord krishna is going to say now in the second chapter lord krishna is going to smash all the arguments which duryodhana uh, sorry which arjuna gives for not killing the kurus all right lord krishna will smash into powder all the arguments <laughs> so now we have to understand that we may be famous personalities in our circle right we may be the most beautiful person or we may be the most handsome person <laughs> we may be the most intelligent we may be the most influential person we may have influence and affluence or we may have either of them <laughs> we may be a great speaker we may be a bodybuilder we may be the most knowledgeable person alive but we cannot be like arjuna okay arjuna was best in everything you will never find a movie star who is also great in physics or chemistry or in some other knowledge you will never find it you will never find a cricketer who is a great singer but arjuna he was a great singer my god he had learned from the um, celestial leader that gandharva you no know? the leader of the gandharvas had taught him how to sing how to dance can you imagine a man who knows to sing who knows how to dance my god <laughs> i mean apart from him being a chatriya apart from being him being the most handsome prince available yes so we cannot be like arjuna so if a perfectionist like arjuna can undergo paralysis because of his own thoughts 
his own conceptions of what is right and wrong what to speak of us we may be great but we are not like arjuna so we will definitely uh, undergo paralysis in some point of our life yes that will happen to us most probably <laughs> but the beauty of arjuna is the the beauty is not that he is undergoing this paralysis the beauty is that he is revealing everything to krishna that's his beauty that is what makes him stand out from everybody else in the kurukshetra from everybody there is nobody like him <laughs> so what's the lesson from here the lesson is very simple lord krishna is acting as of now he is acting as arjuna's friend we will see how that transition happens from being a friend to god which means we will see eventually in the next chapter when arjuna keeps telling about different reasons and when he finishes and then arjuna tells i am confused karpanya dosho pahata swabhava i don't know what's happening and then krishna says asochya nan vasochastvam pragnyavadam scha bhasate gata su nagata su scha nanu shochanti panditah who oh, my dear arjuna you are talking like a eunuch <laughs> these words your words do not befit the one who is born in a chatriya clan so the beauty of arjuna is he is revealing everything to krishna yes so this is the most important lesson which we should take that whenever we are undergoing some kind of a paralysis which we will most likely undergo even if we are best in one field because if the person who is best in everything can undergo paralysis why can't we who may be best in one or two fields undergo paralysis right we may or maybe we will most likely undergo so at that time it is very important that we take shelter of our guru or somebody who is spiritually elevated yes that person may be anybody that person needs to be elevated spiritually or at elevated doesn't mean he has to be a perfected being <laughs> because when i say spiritually elevated people uh, misunderstand me sometimes they say oh are you saying that somebody has to be spiritually perfect no we are not saying that what we are discussing here is we should reveal our problems to somebody who can give us the proper direction in life according to the verses of the scriptures yes because if you go to google oh why google let's talk of youtube there are many people who have opened channels like ask me anything yes you can go and uh, type in youtube maybe ask me anything you will find a thousand channels <laughs> so there are people who are going on giving different advices to people okay you are having this problem do this you are having that problem do this now i am not saying that you can't do that but i am saying we have to be careful from whom we hear should i repeat we have to be very careful in judging okay or i would say in discriminating from whom to hear and from whom not to hear recently i saw that uh, somebody was seeing uh, a video of, uh, interview of some uh, film star in india and he was uh, giving his own analysis about what religion is of what astrology is of what spirituality is and i would have to say that whatever the person said doesn't match with the words of the scriptures that's completely opposite of what he feels i mean the scriptural injunctions are completely opposite but just because he's a film star and he has so many fans there were people who were watching him and they were identifying with what he said was correct yes now that is not very good because just because he's a film star doesn't mean he is having authority to quote something on the scriptures and when i'm saying scriptures i don't mean mundane good bad right wrong whenever we take advice from somebody we have to make sure that the person is deeply rooted to the scriptures scriptures are the basis we cannot go away from that above that we can have our own conception our own interpretations but we cannot misinterpret the word of the scriptures we have to be very firm very fixed with the scriptures first 
and after that we have to add those experiences which we have in our life on top of the scriptural injunctions we cannot base our opinions on our experiences because they are limited yes so for example if you meet a person who has had many breaks in relationships then the person may form an opinion that relationships don't give you happiness but that's not true because if you meet another person who has had very good who has had a very good relationship a very good marriage then that person will tell you oh relationships are the best thing that can happen to a person yes so our opinions about things of this world will be subjective and it will be based on things that we have experienced prior to those events on which we have based our opinions okay and those are fallible fallible means those those opinions can change over time today i'm thinking marriage is good tomorrow i may say oh my marriage is not working so marriage is bad you should not get married <laughs> or suppose after one year i find a person who i feel feel deeply in love with i fall completely in love in madly then uh, i will again say marriage is good right you should get married <laughs> so whenever we are taking suggestion or advice from anybody we must take care that that person who is suggesting us things or who we are asking suggestion from should be connected to the scriptures and he or she practices a life which is dedicated to the words of the scriptures otherwise it is very risky to ask anybody okay what is this what is it so now arjuna's beauty is he doesn't go and uh, ask to anybody there he only goes to krishna and he reveals all the problems okay so that is what i wanted to say here that trying to observe the arjuna inside us and trying to be beautiful like him <laughs> beautiful not externally externally of course he is beautiful and we are also beautiful externally but if we want to be beautiful internally then we have to make sure we have to reveal our problems to those people who are also beautiful internally and who are beautiful internally one who is dedicated to following the words of the scriptures and the gurus and the parampara the tradition all right that is it from my side that is what i wanted to say please be careful when you take advice or suggestions from anybody and please be careful when you ask others also okay because people can give you 10 different opinions but if their opinions are not based on the scriptures those opinions will not yield fulfillment on a long term you will always see that after some time those solutions those suggestions will fade away their charm will be decreased all right and in worst case they may cause more harm to us than causing good all right that is it from my side i liked making this video very much and i hope that you get the right people the right gurus the right people to connect through these scriptures not just by okay you are a man staying in this world from last 70 years okay you have five grandchildren so maybe you can suggest me no age has its own value you can always go and ask your grandfather or your father i am not denigrating them here all right you can go and take general advice from them but when there's a serious crisis in our life like what arjuna is facing my god his bow is slipping can you imagine the gandiva is slipping from his hands he's not able to pick the gandiva that's a very serious crisis so in those times we may not be uh, getting proper help from our parents or from our grandparents provided they are not elevated spiritually if they are elevated spiritually then no problem we can always go and ask them then we don't need to go to anybody right but uh, generally i have seen in most of the cases that's the other way around the parents may not be they may be good they may have experience but that doesn't mean they have scriptural knowledge okay and now i am not saying people uh, about people in india here because in india everybody most of the hindus or most of the people they will know one or two verses from the gita no i am not talking of those people here <laughs> just knowing one two verses from the gita like in india there are some uh, two three famous verses like from the gita they will know na karmanevadika raste ma phaleshu kadachana 
देन दे ऑल्सो नो दिस परित्राणा साधुनाम विनाशाय च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाथाए संभवामी युगे युगे सो दे नो ऑल दिस वर्सेस टू थ्री वर्सेस बट दैट डजन मेक देम स्क्रिप्चरली नॉलेजेबल यस सो वी वी मे नॉट बी एबल टू टेक एडवाइस फ्रॉम देम ओके सो दैट्स माय रिक्वेस्ट टू यू वेवर यू टेक सजेशन फ्रॉम मेक श्योर दैट द पर्सन इज स्पिरिचुअली कल्टिवेटेड if not elevated <laughs> and that person can be anybody if you are a person who is watching this video you are 40 years old but suppose your son is only 20 years old and he has read the gita he has met spiritual people and he has elevated himself then you can also go and ask him <laughs> if you are a brother and you have a sister who is younger to you and she has so much knowledge about all this then you can also go and ask her all right that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know in the comment section and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you are interested in a consultation with me then approach me in my website below vedic renaissance and if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed then please subscribe to it and share this video with those people who are interested in knowing about the bhagavad gita because we have just started all right we will very soon start with the second chapter until next time wish you good luck with getting or finding the right advice okay see you bye bye